Thank you all so much for coming out tonight and staying. Thank you guys for being here. Um, I'll start by asking uh, Trey and Kelvin. I know that you've been working on this for a long time, uh, but you know your relationship with Kelvin from your previous film becomes the night was very important in the development of this film. Do you guys want to talk about sort of the conversations that you had developing your character and the story as a whole uh, from the beginning? Sure. Uh, conversations we had. Um, yeah, I mean, it started back on our last movie. Uh, we uh, loved each other and wanted to work together again. Um, and it, at that point, it wasn't, there wasn't a title, there weren't character names, but I sort of had the broad outline, I think, and we were talking about that. Um, and then a year later, I think I started writing, and at the same time, we were doing these like mini therapy sessions, we like to call them. Mm -hmm. um, and we were doing text messages and phone calls and talking about um, our past and that time in our lives, you know, uh, relationships with our parents, with our um, loved ones, with pressures, with uh, school, sports, uh, music, whatever it was, and commonalities and differences in our experience. And um, at first it was kind of broad like that and just like, honestly, just getting to know each other even more and deeper. And then I was writing and then I gave him a script like eight months before we started shooting. And then, um, yeah, he gave me a ton of notes and we talked more and then I'd go back and write more. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what you got. I had a beautiful privilege of being able to choose the part I wanted, which never happens, especially when you're as young as I am and shouldn't have that opportunity. But, um, you know, Trey said during that first meeting, he was like, you know, the two parts of this movie, there's the brother in the first half and then there's the boyfriend in the second half. And I was like, well, what's the more, he said, which part would you be more interested in playing? And I was like, well, what's the more challenging role? And he was like, well, you can't play sports, so wrestling. <laughs> And so I said, well, then give me that part. And so he, he said, I would tailor the role for you. And, and that, that is something that, you know, is, is such a gift and I'm so grateful for it, so yeah. Alexa, I know that, that your first uh, scene in the film was a very emotional one. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and, you know, shooting that first scene and then when you guys shot the, the fight scene in the garage? Uh, yeah, so my first scene when I got to Florida was the fight in the car after the clinic. And so they had already been shooting for a while and I kind of came in last. So I was extremely nervous because I couldn't fuck it up. Like I had to be, I had to be good. So I remember just like pacing back and forth in front of the clinic, like under a tree, listening to the song that um, my mom dedicated to me called To Zion by Lauren Hill. And, um, my heart was just racing. And then Trey, I heard Trey yell like, all right, let's go. I just ran over, I s jumped in the truck and I just started sobbing. And we just went, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah, I right. I mean, you were kind of, but you were like in the corner doing your thing and I didn't know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, because I was like crying. And then we started shooting and we were like shook because she brought it. Like that was your first time to do anything on the movie and it was like, oh my God, this girl's incredible. Oh, thank yeah, you. I was, I was in awe. Yeah, I was nervous, but after the initial, like after the first take, I was like, okay, we're doing this. Um, <laughs> and then the scene in the garage was, probably one of the hardest scenes that I've filmed to date. And so we all knew that it had to be one take all the way through, no, no edits, no cuts. So of course, we didn't want to leave the garage until it was like perfect and felt honest and it felt like exactly what it needed to be. So we shot that scene all day and probably all night. And then I remember it was the last take that we did I kind of like fell on the floor and I was crying. Kelvin like ran outside and everybody, like a couple of other people that were working w were sobbing. It was a really chaotic moment and luckily that was the take um, because we probably couldn't go again. <laughs> we were, yeah, we were tired. But um, yeah, that was probably one of the hardest scenes but it was just, you know, there was there was a lot of trust between Kelvin and I, and between Trey and I, and Kelvin and Trey, and so I think we all just felt really comfortable um, with each other, and, and we felt like we could be as vulnerable as we needed to be, so it felt, it was extremely challenging, but it felt really, really special. Trey, um, the music in the film is incredible. You have Kanye, Frank Ocean, all these amazing 
uh, songs in it. Do you want to tell us about how that you know influenced the script writing and sort of the inception of the film, how the music is embedded in, into the fabric of the film? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, this movie's aspects of it have been brewing for a really long time, um, probably since I was in high school. And at that time, you know, I was obsessed with certain movies like Days and Confused and American Graffiti and Goodfellas and Boogie Nights and um, you could sort of soundtrack driven films. So the first ideas of the movie were just like teens and music. Uh, I think a lot more came out of the movie after a decade of thinking of everything. Um, but it started there. And it, I think it, what it was, too, was that in high school, um, music was really huge for myself. Uh, got me through a lot of things. Um, and it felt right for this movie to not just be the ebb and flow of the whole thing, but to hopefully bring you closer uh, to the characters, you know, and to Emily and Tyler and to their world and headspace. Um, so it ju it just felt right for this movie, and and you know I think if you separated it into like a playlist and put it in order, there's a there's a story being told from track to track. Um, so yeah, it, it just felt like important to put that in the script um, and have it from the beginning. Also too, because you know music opens you up and connects you to new things. Um, so that felt really right. And then it was ju we never thought we'd get this the soundtrack that we had. Um, we just got really, really blessed that uh, all these artists uh, were down. You know. Before I pass it on to the audience, I wanted to ask uh, the both of you, what was it like the first time you saw the second half of the film that your characters are not a part of? Was that sort of a relief or uh, an interesting experience? You read the screenplay, of course, but seeing it for the first time. It just, it's just, it's, it's so amazing how a, a performance and just seeing it all put together can just change so much. You know, you read it and you have this emotional reaction, but then you, you see it and, and I, I felt like, you know, I, we went through such a specific experience filming that first half of the movie and to watch it was, uh, was, it was so, it was so healing, just like it is for the family. You know, we went on this journey and then suddenly I started seeing all the different layers being unpacked and just, it really inspired me to want to show this to my family and show this to my parents and, and show this to my sisters and also open up that dialogue and that conversation, all the things that I was fearful of doing and just the power of, of knowing that as a young person, my voice matters and that my voice to my parents also matters. They, they love me so much. And to be able to, to express that to them and open up this, this dialogue between my dad about um, our communication and our gaps between the generational divide between us both was like, this is the way to do it. You know, I just, I never had the words, but suddenly the movie gave me the, the, the understanding and the, 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 the dialogue to be able to do that. So I was, um, I was just, I was, I was blown away and also just moved, you know? Yeah, I think I was, I felt the same. Like I immediately wanted all like my family to see it and also just the filmmaking and like some of these like transitions and just the shots, like I was, it was beautiful. And like just to even see that the transition from Calvin's face to Taylor's face, I was just excited by the filmmaking. It was incredible. Any questions from the audience over here? I would say my favorite memory was just building the relationship between all of us. We would, um, we went on this really amazing boat trip, and we we um, we went to a sandbar, and we all just kind of were like floating around in the water and having a good time. And we were like in the middle of the ocean, and Trey was just jumping in the ocean, and it was just a lot of fun. Like, uh, and then I would drive to Miami often with Taylor, and we would kind of just like listen to loud music with the windows down. We would go get Cuban food. It was just it was a really great experience. That was like, yeah. Um, for me, I think I, I snuck onto set during uh, the scene between Alexa and Taylor, and um, the bathroom scene. And I remember it was my favorite scene in the movie, and just to see them just kind of riff and, and, and let the scene breathe and grow so much from what was just on the page, and just seeing that connection between two young women that you know wanted to support each other and wanted to love each other and have this dialogue between each other was just like so exciting for me. I have twin sisters that are four years younger than me, and. I respect them so much and they're just better in every way than I am. <laughs> and um, it was just, it was cool to have that in a, in a film and it was cool, especially considering all the things that they go through, both of them, especially her character have. And just to see those two girls connect that way was, um, it just made me really happy, you know? Aww. Anyone else, someone in the back? I 
cannot see you, but whoever wants to shout one question. A question. Was the, was the concept of the film always that you would have the two halves, or did you start with the first half, and how did it evolve in that way? Was the concept of the film always two halves, and how did it come about? Um, it was it was slowly over time, you know, like because I think aspects aspects were brewing for so long. At first, it was like music and teens, and then it became uh, Tyler's story. But um, that wasn't enough, really. Um, and then at some point, uh, the the two halves, probably like six or seven years ago, the two halves were like the really the idea. I think a part of that too was seeing Chunking Express. Um, I love that film and that structure. Um, and that kind of blew my mind, and that that unlocked the idea of a brother and a sister. And then I think more things happening in life, you know, going through some going through some stuff, getting su through some grief, getting to the other side of some things. Um, and and after that, it really spiritually became um, the two halves, uh, and and the yin and the yang, and how those two halves make the whole. You know. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Please stay in your seat, guys. They have to run to another Q&A, so let's get them after. Thank you all Thank so you much. Guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Amazing. Thank you all.